Second uh, Thessalonians chapter number two. We're just going to read a couple verses, and then we'll get start getting into the thought of this chapter. The Bible says in verse number one. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. Now Paul is saying this. He's saying, now we're assembling, we're, ca- we're gathering together. He says, but I'm beseeching you by the coming of the Lord. Now Paul was looking for the Lord to come in his day. But can I say that there's never been a time closer to his coming than right now? And we really have cause to rejoice because everything's been fulfilled to where he can come. And we're here tonight, and we're looking for him to come. Uh, But look at verse number 2. He said, Now we beseech you, brethren, verse number 1, look at verse 2, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we really enjoyed the good singing. Lord, the songs spoke to me. They helped me. They blessed me. Then, Father, we really enjoyed all the testimonies. Lord, they were a blessing. Lord, we thank you for answering prayer thank you for what you did for miss noreen's sister and god thank you for answering brother peter's prayer and lord thank you for putting people in our lives that are a blessing to us and an encouragement someone we can look to and god i'm glad that you give us spiritual heroes folks that just are steadfast and faithful they earnestly contend for the faith Lord, I'm thankful for that. And Lord, I enjoyed all the testimonies. Lord, thank you for those folks just, we're thankful they've been saved. Thankful that you met their needs. Gave them many of their wants. Lord, you're just a good God. We just bless you tonight for allowing us to be in the house of God. Now, Father, I pray that you'd give us meat for our soul. I pray that, Lord, you would certainly create a desire in our hearts for true revival. And God, may we not just have a meeting next week, may we have a reckoning. May we have something we've never, ever experienced before. May we have the presence of God so strong we can't help but be revived. And God, may we see your presence so strong that it transforms our community. God, we're longing for a move of God. And God may even begin here tonight. Now, Father, bless. Bless your people. Lord, I know many of them are weary in body. Lord, they have faced a lot of adversity. And God, they're here tonight. I pray you'd bless them abundantly for it. Now, Father, help us. Use this unworthy vessel. And certainly glorify your name. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' holy name we do pray. Amen and amen. I I want you to notice that Paul is expounding on a few things in this chapter. First of all, he's expounding on being anxious. He says to them um, two times in those two verses that the Lord's coming's at hand. But notice he says that they be not, verse number two, not soon shaken in mind, or troubled. Can I say that pastoring now for a lot longer than I realize that I've been pastoring over 25 years and preaching over 35 years, or it'll be 35 years first week November, I've never seen a time when good godly people have been as troubled as they are now. A lot of people are even being shaken in their faith. A lot of people that have loved God, served God, been a witness for God, all of a sudden are shaken and beginning to question very things about their life in Christ. I see it. I see folks that are troubled whether or not they've done enough for God, or folks that are troubled in whether or not they're right with God, and folks that 
their very attack on their mind uh, is really robbing them of the peace of God and the joy of the Lord. And Paul was saying, as we get closer to the second coming, not to be shaken, not to be troubled. You say, preacher, why is it so? We know the Lord's coming. Uh, we, we don't have to be uh, rocket scientists or Bible scholars or have a Bible degree. Uh, 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 Paul said in 2 Timothy, This know also in the last days perilous times shall come. And then he lists a bunch of things that's going to start happening. Uh, those things have been happening for a long time. Uh, and perilous times are amongst us. Uh, I, I, I've never seen a time uh, 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 when men don't know if they're men and women don't know if they're women. Uh, uh, we got somebody on the Supreme Court can't even define what a woman is. Uh, I mean, we're living in a day uh, where wickedness is abounding. Uh, uh, we're living in a day when spirituality is dwindling. Uh, we're living in a day where there's a famine for the hearing of the Word of God. Uh, everything uh, uh, that said that would happen in the last days, there's wars and rumors of wars. Uh, 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 they're even starting to spit out of uh, Washington uh, uh, about a nuclear war in World War III. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, if you can't see on the horizon uh, uh, that Gabriel's about ready to blow the trumpet uh, and the church is about out of here, uh, uh, friend, you're just not paying attention. Now, if we know that, don't you think the sorry no good devil knows that? And don't you think that he knows his time is shortened so he's pulling out all the stops and he's trying his best to trouble God's people uh, so we can't be the light and the salt that we're supposed to be that others can get in the faith. So he is exhorting us or expounding on being anxious. He says, don't be uh, 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 troubled uh, uh, by uh, in your spirit and yet so many people their spirits are overwhelmed with this world hmm? he said uh, don't be uh, uh, troubled by word uh, you shouldn't be upset by all that people are saying and everything that's going on right. but yet we tend to let that affect us he says not to be troubled even by letter from us he's talking about the very scriptures he was pinning down he said, don't let it trouble you. The Lord is coming, but that should excite you. Mm -hmm. And he concludes it <clears throat> as that the day of Christ is at hand. So we see he expounds on being anxious. But he also expounds on the advent. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, we find in verse number one he talks about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in verse number two he says uh, at that the day of Christ is at hand uh, but look in verse uh, number three uh, he says this uh, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first uh, look in verse number six uh, 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 he is saying, uh, And no, now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Uh, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, that's all very important. He's talking about the advent of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you're a student of the Bible, and if you study uh, eschatology or the end times, uh, uh, you know the next great event in Scripture uh, is the catching away of the saints, uh, the translation of the saints, uh, what is commonly referred to as the rapture. That's when Gabriel's going to blow the trumpet. That's when there'll be the shout of the archangel. That's when the church, uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the rapture. The Lord doesn't come back to the earth then. We rise to meet him in the air. Everything he's dealing with right here is the second coming, not the rapture. Now, it's important to understand because a lot of people, they, they intertwine them or they don't understand it fully. And the reason I read verse 6 and 7 
because he makes a statement in verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Where it says, only he who now letteth will let. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. He says, until he be taken away. You see, my dear friends, the Holy Ghost is working right now in this world. He's working through the preaching of the Word of God. He's working through your witness. Uh, he's working convicting people. Uh, he's working confirming people. Uh, he's working and leading and guiding us into all truth. He's our comforter. Uh, Jesus ascended and went back to heaven and sent the comforter. And he will be here until the rapture. He's, now he that letteth will let. He's working until he be taken out of the way. And when we go, he goes. And my dear friends, the rapture hasn't taken place yet. Therefore, the second coming hasn't taken When will the second coming take place? Seven years after the rapture. Now, I say all that to say this. If we can see all this stuff starting to line up now, and if you look at Matthew 24, that deals with the Jews, and that deals with the second coming. That doesn't deal with the rapture. And you look in prophecy at all the things that are lining up. My dear friends, the church is out of here seven years before that happens. And it's a lining up. Mm -mm. So he deals with the advent, the second coming of the Lord. He deals with being anxious. But what I really want to focus on, he expounds on the Antichrist. Look, if you will, in verse 3 again. He says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there become a falling away first. Here it is. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The Lord Jesus will not come back to this earth until there's a great falling away of people turning away from anything that resembles God to a false doctrine. And the Son of Man, or the man of sin, be revealed the Son of Perdition. That's the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be revealed after the rapture, and he'll be here until the second coming. So that's important to understand. So with all that in mind, I want to give you a little thought tonight on the workings of the Antichrist. Now, don't come up after church and tell me that you know who the Antichrist is. If you come up and tell me that, that tells me that you, you are filled with the devil because only the devil knows who the Antichrist is. All right? And I don't really care who it's going to be. I'm not going to speculate. You know, I remember in the 70s, everybody said it was going to be Henry Kissinger because he was a Jew. You know, I remember that. And, and then I heard it was going to be Obama because he's charismatic. Well, there's a problem. He's not a Jew. And he's not an American. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. He's Kenyan. But anyway, uh, and, and, and people all the time trying to figure out things that God didn't tell us. And you're not going to know because he's not going to be revealed to after the church is gone. So, uh, you know, if you want to know, I guess don't be saved. You know, it doesn't really matter to me who he is. All I know is he's coming. And, 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 I want to get into the, some of the workings of him because I want you to see not only what he will do, but I want you to see that some of the things are already being put in place. Now, as I was studying, I wanted to look and see. I've got quite a few books on quotes. At least ten. One book has 10,000 quotes. Another one has 3,000 quotes. Another one has 5,000 quotes. Then I have uh, uh, three books of quotes by some authors that I, I really enjoy. Matter of fact, I just got a quote book by Tozer. Yes, loaded. Hmm? He likes Tozer. Uh, so I, I, I start. Like, there's not many folks that quote on the Antichrist. And what I find in commentaries and anything that writes, if if they don't really understand it or haven't studied it, they just don't mention it. And, and there, there wasn't much in any facet on quotes on the Antichrist 
uh, I did see that two quotes, there was only about four, I seen two that kind of made me go, hmm. One of them was written by a fellow who said, since the Antichrist is going to be like Christ, then Christ must be like the Antichrist. I said, what nut wrote that? Well, he was a cardinal in the Catholic Church. I'm thinking, well, you're an idiot, so I ain't going to listen to what you have to say. Uh, Christ is not like the Antichrist. Christ is Christ. The Antichrist, like everything the devil does, tries to imitate Christ. The other quote that I read that made me just scratch my head and thinking, you know, these guys are idiots. Said, since Christ came through the lineage of the Jews, then the Antichrist will be a Jew, and only the Jews can blaspheme. Gentiles can't blaspheme because they don't know anything about, about Christ. And that the same lineage that produced Jesus produced Judas. I'm thinking, what was this guy drinking or smoking when he was writing this stuff? Huh? So anyway, there's not much written about the Antichrist because a lot of people don't study it. They don't think on it. They don't meditate. They don't read the Word of God. The Word of God really only mentions Antichrist about five times. Here it doesn't mention Antichrist, but it mentions the son of perdition. Now I know some people, because Judas was called a son of perdition, they think that Judas Iscariot will be reincarnated and be the Antichrist. No, Judas Iscariot's in hell, and he's going to the lake of fire. I don't find anywhere in the scriptures where anybody is damned to hell and let out. I don't find that. Just because it called him the son of perdition, it calls him the man of perdition, doesn't mean it's going to be Judas. It just means they're both were possessed by the devil. Hmm? So let me give you a few things, just some things that the Lord kind of gave me and showed me this week. But let me give you something about the workings of the Antichrist. Can I say, first of all, he will control the narrative. We don't really understand it because we have lived in America, we've been free, and we thought we've been free all of our lives. But in communist China, do you know they control what goes on the Internet? People living in China cannot research the gospel and see how to be saved. People in China do not have access to research certain things about many things when it comes to democracy and freedom and all. Their internet is filled with propaganda and that's all they're allowed to see. Much like Russia. You see, we have lived in a country that has the First Amendment, which means freedom of speech and freedom of worship, uh, and we've had the privilege uh, of being able to say what we want to say, be free thinkers, uh, be able to research. we got uh, great libraries and be able to see uh, 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 all kinds of things about whatever religion uh, uh, you name believes and what this believes and what that believes, and we can research any history about any nation that's ever been on earth. Uh, uh, we have the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, uh, they can't even hide things in, in secret in the government from us. Uh, they're not supposed to. Uh, uh, but anyway, we have, uh, by large, enjoyed freedom. Until we found out the last election that certain social media outlets would not allow conservative news to go on. And they even ban the sitting president from participating because that's how most of his followers got their information. We also faced a pandemic, which believe it if you want to or not, I really don't care there's enough information out there if you research it and read after it like I have, you'll come to find out. 
it was man-made. And can I say that they controlled the narrative and all you have to do is go and look at the people who were controlling the narrative and see how rich they got off of it. Go and read and study and find out that the first vaccine they came out with, they only tested on eight people. And now they're trying to suppress how many young people at the picture of health are developing heart disease and even dying of heart attacks, even teenagers. They're trying to cover it all up. They said that the virus would... Uh, uh, only attack, or the vaccine would only attack the virus, and now they're, they're, they're even controlled the narrative on autopsies of young people where they find out it, they find it was in their brain, it's in their heart, it's attacking everything. But they don't, you know, they're not going to come out and tell you that. And by the way, where's Fauci? Now that the threat that the truth's come out and the threat that he's going to be prosecuted, you don't see it as ugly bug anymore, do you? They controlled the narrative. It's all setting up the fact when the Antichrist shows up, the only thing that's ever going to be on any airwave is what he allows. You say, preacher, prove it. I'm glad you said so. Look at verse number 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. It already started in Paul's day where they began to do the workings of the Antichrist, to steal away from truth, to steal away from what actually happened, the events happened. You do remember that the Jews even made up a lie that the apostles stole the body of Jesus. Mm. Can I say that that went forth more than the gospel for a while? And the mystery had already began to work. The mystery of iniquity had already begun to work in Paul's day. John wrote it this way in 1 John 4, 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of antichrist which whereof ye, ye have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. That was in the apostles' day. Now you magnify it 2,000 years and see how much it has worked. Now we have TV shows that deny that Jesus even was here. We have TV shows that just make him out to be a religious leader. They, de they don't treat him any different than they do Muhammad. We have TV shows that teach that he had a, a sexual relationship with Mary Magdalene. Uh, we have TV shows that says that he had children with her. We have TV shows that said he was a homosexual and when John was laying on his breast uh, it's because he was a homosexual. We have all kinds of blasphemous things that take away from the deity of Jesus Christ. It's all the spirit of Antichrist where people won't put their faith that Jesus is and was and will always be the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Do you know why there's false Bibles in the world? It takes away from the deity of Christ. Do you know the New International Version, the NIV, the New Idiot Version I call, uh, uh, took 171 times, took uh, the blood of Jesus Christ out of the Scriptures? You know why? Because the blood proved that His deity, His blood came from the Father. And if we're not saved by His blood, we're saved by His death, then why did He die the torturous death of the cross? Why did He shed His blood? For without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. You see, what happens is uh, they start taking stuff out and they realize the rest of it isn't congruent. So they have to come out with a new version and a new version and a new version. You know why we've never had changes? Because it's the absolute truth. And it agrees with itself throughout from Genesis to Revelation. You know why man, you know man didn't write the Bible? Because it tells you how wicked man is and tells you how great God is. Hmm? But see, the Antichrist will control the narrative. Through lines of communication, he'll communicate with every nation and he'll tell them exactly what he wants them to know. Can I say, in the workings of the Antichrist, he'll also conquer all the problems that man thinks they have. 
Look at verse number 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Now your Bible said while he's on earth, he's going to have a power, all the power of Satan. He's going to have, uh, 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 not only that, he'll do signs and lying wonders. When he comes, he's going to end famine. When he comes, he's going to end the oil crisis because everybody's going to be on electric cars. Huh? When he comes, he's going to uh, solve uh, global warming. He's going to solve cancer. He's going to solve all problems. He's going to have all power. and Everybody's going to begin to believe he is God. He's going to conquer all the problems. Hmm? Now, we live in a day and age where politicians promise to conquer all the problems until they get elected. Then they don't do anything until it's time to get elected again. Uh, that lame brain is running up there in Ohio, and I wouldn't vote for either one of them. Jokers are both criminals. But the one where the judge said that he should pay back what money he stole from Cincinnati and he ought to apologize to the voters and nobody should ever vote for him again. Now he's got a few cops out there telling him that he raised $200 million for the police. Nobody on council raised money for the police. They allowed money to go to the police, but he didn't do it. He just voted yay or nay, but he's taking credit for it. Hmm? But they don't tell you what else was attached to the bill. The streetcar named Desire. Anybody been to Cincinnati? Have you ever seen that thing run? Do you know how many millions of dollars? It cost $30 million just to do the survey on it. Millions and millions. Do you realize? And it only goes four blocks. Do you realize they could have solved the homeless problems in greater Cincinnati for the money they spent on a rail that nobody's ever seen run? Ignorant. How come we don't have smart people doing things? Now let's break it down to Florence. It blew my mind right outside the aquatic center. First of all, why is Florence buying ball fields, buying world of golf? Why are they buying and having an aquatic park that now they want to do away with? Why in the world they spend it all? Well, they spend all the money because they got more money than they got sense. But what blew my mind, right out in front of the aquatic center, they had the whole, it used to be, you know, Tanner's Lane. Now it's Union Boulevard. Uh, but when Sydney was little, she saw BLVD. She said, Ewing Beloved. So Ewing Beloved, <laughs> she did. So that's why we call it. But anyway, right in the middle, they had it all shut down because right in the middle, right out in front of the Justice Center, they put the seal of Florence in the concrete. Spent almost a hundred thousand dollars on putting that seal in the concrete a hundred thousand dollars at the same time in the Boone County School District we had uh, teachers having to photocopy books because they couldn't afford to buy books for the kids now which is more important concrete or books for kids we wonder why the school system's messed up. Well, we quit praying in schools. We quit teaching them about Jesus. Uh, uh, we quit teaching the Ten Commandments. Uh, uh, we started teaching them they came from monkeys, and when they started acting like it, now we want to fix it. Hmm? It's an absolute mess. Hmm? We're supposed to have smart people, and a lot of them ain't got sense enough to come in out of the rain. It's sad. I remember when they was having to buy trailers to put out behind the schools. They did it at Connor. They did it at Boone. Uh, and they was doing that because they didn't have enough space in the classrooms. Uh, uh, but yet, we're putting $100,000 in concrete. We're buying ballparks. We're buying World of Golf. We're buying uh, you know, building aquatic parks. We're building a skate park. You know what all the skate parks and all these little parks around here do? They harbor drug dealers. That's what they do. Huh? It's a sad, sad state of affairs. But yet, we can't... I don't even know who's running for mayor in Florence. It's two women. I guarantee you they're over their head. Huh? 
You do uh, this is how this is how ridiculous politics are. The city of Lexington and the city of Louisville both voted that every public facility was non-smoking. Florence refused to do it. I mean, if Lexington and Louisville, what, why couldn't Florence do it? Because the mayor was a smoker. She wouldn't let it come to the table to even vote on it. That's politics. It's not about what, what let's do what's right. It's not about what's doing best for the community. It's what they want to do for themselves. Well, when this joker shows up, he's going to have all the answers. And it's going to blow people's minds because most people that have had elections have seen wickedness in politics. Hmm? And I'm, not, I'm just throwing some things out around here. But I'm talking about you go into South America where the cartel puts in the politicians, where they vote and then they say, well, the right one didn't get the votes, we're going to throw the vote out. Well, that kind of happened here last time, didn't it? Uh, but anyway, uh, there ain't no way mashed potato brains got 81 million votes. Maybe 81, but not 81 million. There ain't no way. Uh, and now they're even proving dead people have been voting Democrats for 100 years, huh? Let's fix it. Oh, no, we can't do that. How come you got to have a driver's license and get on an airplane, but you don't have to have a driver's license to vote? You do in Kentucky. If you don't know how in Indiana, you ought to move to Kentucky. Huh? Why, can't, why, is that, why is that so tough? That's racist. That's what they say. What, because black people can't get a driver's license? They can't get a state ID? All they got to do is go to the, you know, the courthouse and apply for one. I get it right there. It's not racist. It's just politics. Well, this guy's going to have all the answers. And it's going to blow everybody's mind. There's wicked politics in Australia, New Zealand, South America. We don't even want to talk about the communist countries. This guy's going to show up and have all the answers. He's going to have the answers. Why does that crowd that used to fill up them churches, where are they at? You know, when the rapture happens, it's going to be a chaotic event. Even though there's not as many people saved as there was 50 years ago, there's going to be a chaotic event. People driving a car, the rapture happens, they're gone. The car, it's still driving. If there's a pilot flying an airplane, y'all know Brother Jeff Davis, he's a saved man. If he's in the friendly skies... It's going to be the terroristic skies once he's raptured out. Uh, think about it. Amen. Uh, people in, on the, in the, at the workforce. Now, I don't mean to get gruesome, but you do know when you get raptured out, that means your soul. That means anything in your soul stays. But Charlie, there's not much to you, but it's staying. Your flesh, your glasses, your blood. Just think about that. Somewhere, somebody's going to be having church when the rapture happens. And when people go in to, to find out about them folks, and all they see is a bloody mess everywhere, it's going, it, it's, it's going to be more than just aliens showed up. They're going this world's going to be chaotic. There's going to be questions. I mean, the news media isn't going to be able to suppress what happened to all these people. But the Antichrist will. You see, when he shows up, he's going to have all the answers. And the Bible makes it clear the first three and a half years, he's going to set up a one world government, there'll be a one world religion. Everything's going to flow smoothly. Uh, he's going to have everything set in order. They're going to revere him and worship him. And everything's going to be wonderful. The second three and a half years is going to be total anarchy. There's going to be creatures coming out of the abyss that are, they sound wicked looking. And they're going to start terrorizing people. Why do you think we have all the wicked shows we had a show called Lucifer. 
we've had vampire shows for 20 years now. We had the walking dead, where dead people get up and walk around and do... There are going to be things coming up out of the ground that are going to be terrorizing people. See, all these wicked shows have, have all set in motion this spirit of Antichrist. It's desensitizing people to reality. Why do you think colleges now give scholarships to people that play video games? Hmm? If I'd only known, I'd have played that Pong a whole lot more in the 70s. Boop! 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 Boop. I had one. That was it. That was all. It was, that was all. And if he's really good, you went from the big guy to the little guy. Boop, 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 boop. They give scholarships to kids that play video games. And let me help you with something. They're not playing Pong. They're playing some real high-tech stuff. And some of it is very graphic and very wicked. Do you know why a lot of these young people that are zoned into that, you can't reach them with any reality? Miss hmm? Nett sees some of them at the doctor's office, they'll bring them in, these kids can't even talk to people. Because all they ever do is play video games. And she'll say, do you have your driver's license? No. Well, you're going to get it? No. You're going to college? No. You're going to get a job? No. Well, what do you like to do? Play video games. Figures. Hmm? They can't communicate, can't do anything. That whole crowd won't be shocked by anything because that's all they've seen on the screen because parents have let TVs and video games raise their children. People used to look at me like I had two heads when we was in an old building, and I told people they's nuts if they let their kids read that Harry Potter junk. Now they make amusement parks about it. Do you know that woman who wrote those books as a Satanist? And do you know that everything about those books were to turn their attention from righteousness to put their faith in wicked things? And do you know that kids, when they'd go see it, they'd come back and say, who wants Jesus Christ? He's stupid. We want Harry Potter. He does magic. Mm. And some of those same parents that used to look at me like I had two heads, their kids aren't in church today, and they, they wonder why. I'm just telling you, he's going to conquer all the problems. Can I say this? He's going to contradict the truth. He won't let people know the real truth. Look at verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. He's, hey, he's the spawn of Satan, and Satan's the father of all lies. What do you think this guy's going to do? Deceive. Can I say this? He'll not only contradict the, the truth, he's going to conspire against Israel. Uh, we, we didn't have time. We could take you over and, and let you see in Zechariah. We could take you and show you throughout uh, several parts of, of the book of Revelation. But this is what's going to happen. Revelation 12, 17, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, the woman's Israel, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The woman's going to have to flee to the wilderness. Israel's going to have to go in hiding, and the Antichrist is going to hunt for her and try to destroy her off the face of the earth. He's going to conspire against Israel. Can I say this? He'll be contemptible against God. Look at verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He'll be sitting in the temple of Jerusalem, proclaiming to be God. He'll revile anything that's of God. He'll be repulsive towards anything that's righteous and holy, and he will be revered. Let me say this, I went way too long. He'll bring condemnation to his followers. Look at verse 10. And this is very important. You need to understand these verses right here. Because another guy by the name of Tim LaHaye came out with a series that everybody jumped on called Left Behind. It was not biblically based. Look at verse 10. And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. 
You ought to underscore that. Anybody that's heard the gospel and rejected it, not receive uh, the love of the truth that they might be saved. Look what happens. Verse 11, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. They'll take of the mark of the beast and they'll do everything the Antichrist says. That's why any of your loved ones has been under the gospel, you've got to pray for them, you've got to do everything you can to point them to Jesus. Because if the rapture happens, they'll have strong delusion, they're going to follow the Antichrist. Look at what it says in verse number 12. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. In that series, Left Behind, the church is raptured, and then all of a sudden some guy, I guess he's a Methodist preacher or something, and he gets, he gets to study the Bible, realize what happened, and he starts preaching to folks that they can get saved, and they get saved. Not if they've heard the gospel. Now listen to me. In every dispensation throughout the Bible, God's had a way where man can come to him. We live in the gospel, or, or the grace age, the, the, time, the fullness of time for the Gentiles. We live where the gospel is preached, where people can hear the gospel, get under conviction, call on Jesus, and be saved by faith. My dear friends, that will end when the rapture happens. Because the Holy Ghost is going with us. God will have a way where people can come to Him, and in some capacity it's going to be uh, some ways of the Old Testament. But they're going to have to be willing to die for it because they'll have to reject the mark of the beast. And under the Antichrist's administration, the only way you can get groceries, the only way you can get gasoline or electricity for your electric car, the only way you can get anything of commerce, you have to have the mark of the beast. It'll be a cashless society. You, all you got to do is show your mark, your number, and you can get everything. Mm -mm. But can I say, those that reject, that accept God in his, administra in, in his way of being saved, they have to reject that. It's going to be a works-based salvation. Now, part of the Old Testament worship is they would offer up the ashes of a red heifer, a red cow that was without spot, that was perfect. Can I say two weeks ago, maybe it's three weeks ago now, there was a lab down in Alabama, Arkansas, no, I'm sorry, Texas, that had um, perfected engineering cows that were red without any blemishes. And the first shipment went to Israel three weeks ago. Now, why in the world do they need red heifers in, in Israel because after the rapture that's going to be a way of getting to God that's how close we are friends hmm. but yet this joker is going to damn anybody that's heard the gospel by taking they'll, they'll believe a lie and take the mark of the beast now listen knowing all this what's our responsibility we should pray Pray for our loved ones. Pray for folks to get saved. Pray that God and His wrath will remember mercy. Pray that God will do a work in our midst while we still have opportunity. We need to be prepared. How do we get prepared? By being revived. Not same old, same old, just coming to church and leaving. We need to really get on fire for God. Need to be revived. Need to be re reliable. Isn't it amazing how everybody shuffles God into their schedules now? Hmm? Now, I know I come up in a different day. I come up in a day where we didn't have anything at church times. We didn't have ball practice on Wednesday nights because that was church night. Even the Lutherans went to church on Wednesday night when I come up. Uh, we definitely didn't have anything on Sunday. You couldn't even buy gas on Sunday when I came up. And I know we live in a different age, but you wouldn't believe the excuses I get from people why they can't come to church. Well, friends, the time for excuses is over. You have to understand the Antichrist is alive somewhere in this world. He's not been revealed, but he's alive. 
If they're sending red heifers to, to Israel, friend, it's high time we awake for our salvation is nearer than we believe. We need to be, we need to be revived, and then we need to be reliable. God ought to count, be able to count on us. Your church ought to be able to count on you. Hmm? People watching you ought to be able to count on us. You know why some people don't come to church? Because they watch Christians. Hmm? We ought to be revived, we ought to be reliable, we ought to be ready. Now, I want to ask you a question right now. If the trumpet was to sound right now, are you ready? Say, preacher, I'm saved. I didn't ask you that. Are you ready to meet the Lord and give an account of your life? Can you give an account of this past week? Hmm? How much have you prayed for a revival? How much have you sought the Lord in scriptures and in prayer? How much have you meditated on Him? How much have you hungered and thirsted for? You see, if we was doing those things, our services would be a whole lot different. So knowing the Antichrist is on his way, we ought to pray, we ought to be prepared, and we ought to prompt, be prompt to warn others that he's coming. The Lord's coming and so is the Antichrist. I ought to be a witness. I ought to let folks know. Jesus is coming. It amazes me how much this world has disdain for us, for the things of God. If you've ever been in a big city or been around a big ball game, you'll see people holding up signs, Jesus is coming, John 3.16. All kinds of signs, prepare, the end of the world has come. Now they have commercials saying, you've seen all the signs, and they've got a guy sitting there preparing, the world's about to end. They said, oh, not that one, this sign. Uh, they, deny, they deny that this world had a universal flood, but I can't tell you how many commercials I've seen where it refers to Noah's Ark. Hmm? Uh, every so-called funeral on church they play amazing grace but then every depiction of a preacher he's a whoremonger and a drunk they don't show holy men standing for the word of God it's all employ the fact to desensitize people to religion that's what most people think church is they think church is something boring they think that, you know, unless you've got a rock band, unless uh, uh, you're being entertained, that it's not, not worth coming out to. Well, when you see the greatest love letter ever written, that we were sinners, but yet God loved us? Boy, that, there's nothing boring about that. Huh? And what amazes me is how much we've allowed the world to come into church. You, you want to talk about something that's on the opposite end of the spectrum I see this, I get letters I'm a gospel magician let me come into your church well isn't magician isn't, isn't really the, the basis of that satanic why do I need a magician when I've got God magician's an illusionist I've got God, he really can change I've seen him change the worst sinner to a saint why do I need a magician they said, oh, we give the gospel through magic. Not at our church, you don't. Huh? I'm talking about all kinds, but, but folks think that's normal. I got an advertisement for a conference at, at a church in Georgia in January inviting me to come, and, and I'm looking at it, and all the preachers don't have neckties and they're wearing blue jeans. And I'm coming to that mess? What they're saying is we're dumbing down what is righteous and holy. Now, a necktie don't make you holy. But Jesus gave his best. And we ought to look our best. And plus, if you look in the Old Testament, the high priest, if he wasn't adorned a certain way, God took his life. But yet, in order to get a crowd, we're going to do away with the pulpit, 
we're going to get the preacher's stool. He's just going to tell some stories. And that's why people are dying and going to hell. And we need to warn them. Jesus is coming. He's coming. And he's coming a lot sooner than we think. Or we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't even have had a message tonight. We'd have been in this altar begging God to touch our loved one's hearts. So I wonder tonight, are you ready? Preach the message one time, ready or not, here he comes. And he's coming. We need to get ready. We need to take full advantage of this revival this week because this very well may, may be the last revival we ever get to attend. Are you ready? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, Lord, we know that your imminent returns at hand, and yet we don't let that impact us the way it should. God, forgive me where I've sinned and where I've transgressed and where I've failed your grace, failed you, even this past week. Help us, Lord, to have our sights and our minds and our hearts on heavenly things. Lord, we know that if you don't intervene, this world is certainly headed to hell. So we implore upon you to make your presence known. And God, for you to do a work in spite of us, we might truly be revived help our focus to be shifted back on heavenly things God help us to prepare and warn the lost and unruly that Jesus is coming God may our words not be idle words but may they be backed by all of heaven may they be spoken with power and boldness and may true Holy Ghost conviction come. And may we see sinners saved. Lord, even lost people look around and know something's wrong in this world. God, help us to share with what can be right. They can be right with God. Now, God, help our little church to be revived and to do something big for God in these days. And Father, we'll thank you for it. Bless now. And God, certainly for somebody here tonight unsaved, I pray tonight be the night of their salvation. I pray the saints of God, Lord, get their sight set on Jesus and live accordingly. Have your way. Bless in this invitation. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.